The following is an exclusive presentation of the NCCU Sports Network. Talk about what that meant, uh, the win meant to your program. I mean, a ton for us. You know, it's one of those situations where, you know, it was a little revenge from last year. We were excited as a program and as a team to, to get that win. You know, we know the last few years Bethune-Cookman has been one of the top programs in the country uh, and definitely in the MEAC conference. So to beat those guys at their place, I think it, it helps us get over a stepping stone or a hurdle for our program over the last couple of years. So, you know, the key now is we can't get too high and we can't get too low. And that's the biggest thing for our program. We got to stay even keeled and make sure we take each game one game at a time. What do you think the the key to success was this past weekend? I thought we kept focus. You know that weather storm that we had uh, the, 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 compared to lightning, uh, we were able to stay focused and continue to push forward. And we told them at halftime, the team that can stay focused the longest is the team that's going to win this football game. Because after that delay, you know the momentum is gone and everything is back basically to the start of the game. So you got to get your guys back focused and you got to come at, come back out with a sense of urgency and a different type of focus than you had before the break. What did you guys do during the break? <laughs> we just kind of hung around. That, that was the biggest thing. Uh, the guys listened to a lot of music in the locker room. We had some fruits and things like that we gave to the guys to make sure that they uh, you know, at least stayed with something on their stomach. But it, w it was tough uh, for coaches and players, especially when we went back out. They, they brought us back in after the first time. You know, Everybody was a little disappointed, but fortunately we were able to stay focused and, and to finish the game the right way. Was there an opportunity for the coaches to kind of get back together and regroup, kind of reevaluate the first half? Like, all right, we got pretty much got to start over, like you said, like a new game starting again. We did have more time as a coaching staff to kind of look over the game plan and make some tweaks and some adjustments. But after a while, after three hours, we can't go out there and put an entire new game plan in. So it just became a sit around and waiting game. Obviously, you guys, it didn't hurt you too much. You have you, you exploded in the second half. Do you think you guys got a chance to kind of, like you said, refocus and? And, and they stayed up and it kind of played to your, your advantage? Well, I think, you know, we were right there on the, I think we had momentum going into the storm or, or into the break. And I think we were just about ready to explode then. I'm just glad, we, you know, we just kept consistent and really finished out the way we ended the break. And we exploded. I think we had over 300 some yards in the second half. And I was proud to see that they were able to do that. Yeah, obviously, you know, big plays played a big part in the second half. Malcolm had for the game, like three passes for over 40 yards and a couple more for over 20 yards. Talk about those big plays and, and how key it is to your offense. Uh, it's, it's been big for us. You know, we're in a situation where, you know, last year we, we were down some of our receivers, some of our key receivers. A lot of those guys on our roster, they all were still on the roster last year. Uh, but we had some injuries to that position. And I think we were able to come back this year and, and refocus. And, you know, right now we're pretty healthy. And I think that's the key to, to any program at this day and age. Uh, we're probably in that, entering that mid-season mid -season run. And we got all cylinders clicking. You know, we got all our backs and receivers. And our offensive line is, is stay predominantly healthy. So now we're able to do what we wanted to do going into going into the season, and that's push the ball down the field. That's kind of the core of our passing game, and we're going to try to consistently do that week in and week out. Can you talk about the winning streak you guys have going on right now within the MEAC conference and how you guys have been able to keep this level of consistency in, in, a, in a pretty strong FCS conference? I think it's all about focus more than anything for our guys. Our guys understand that you know we have a mission, and our mission from day one was to win a MEAC championship outright. And right now, you know we control our own destiny, and that's what we want to try to do each day, each week. Our goal as a program is to try to get a little bit better than the week before. So that's what our focus was going to Bethune. That's what our focus is going into fans. You is to try to make sure that we continue to get better as a program, offense, defense, and special teams. How about the challenge of uh, FAMU coming in here, a team that you guys have never beaten at home from what I'm reading here in the mm -hmm. notes. Uh, what do they bring here to uh, Durham? Extraordinary talented team. You know, you can't look at those guys' record and think for any any doubt that they're going to come in here uh, and play like a one-win team. Those guys are, have explosive players on the offense and defense side of the football. One thing that jumps out at me is how they've been able to play about three different quarterbacks uh, the entire year, and all of them have had some, some, some form of fashion of success. And I think that's just a compliment to Coach Woods and, and their coaching staff over there. The guys were pretty motivated last week to get that first win over Bethune. Now the guys 
Is that is that a new goal this week? You know, you never beat fam. You here? Is that a new goal to, to accomplish this week? I really didn't even know it until you until you mentioned it, Jonas. But you know, I think it is. You know, anytime you can do something that has never been done before in the history of your program, just like last week, we were able to beat Bethune for the first time in over 20 years. You know, having a new challenge this week, able to beat Bethune Cookman. I mean, beat fam. You at our place. I think that is a, ch a great challenge. What was the reaction after the win? I, I mean, I, I watched a little bit from TV, but I really couldn't tell. Did the guys celebrate knowing they had done something for the first time in 21 years, or they just kind of went like business as usual? Like, okay, we expect to do this. Let's get off the field in. Oh, no, we enjoyed every bit of it on the plane <laughs> ride home. Uh, you know, we have a 24-hour rule. We're going to enjoy it for 24 hours, then we're going to come back business as usual the next day. But I made sure that, that they understood how important it was, and it was a big, big moment. Uh, we talk about being our tradition, our legacy as a program. That's one of our mottos this year. And that group of seniors, they had never beat with them cooking. And to do that is going to be a special place for them in the NCCU history. Well, Mike had that last pick to kind of see the game. I saw from the TV he was pointing at him on the sideline. Was he pointing at you? You know, he was pointing at after he got that pick. I don't think he was pointing at me, <laughs> but I think it was our first interception of the year, so I was happy to see that. And then um, last week against Norfolk State, well, week four last, I guess, against Norfolk State, uh, you guys had to have that one drive where they were kind of getting back and you went down the field and scored. It's like the same thing happened against Bethune in the fourth quarter. The drive, you guys went up 24-7. It was like a 15-play drive. You converted on three third and longs. Mm -hmm. Another gutsy drive from your team. Talk about their 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 strength and their mentality going out and, and converting that drive. We talked a lot about doing that day and during the course of the week about guys uh, having a place in history and how, how bad do you want it and how hungry are you. And I think that drive solidified everything we had talked about that week. We had guys like Jason Murphy come up with some big time catches. Ramon Simpson did a great job of breaking tackles and uh, we did a good job of overcoming some, some penalties. And that was, that was one of the things that, that we talked about. Those guys, they put it all on the line. They left it all on the field, especially on that drive. That was probably the most critical drive of the entire game. I mean, three third and longs. I know, I know you wouldn't want to be in a situation. But talk about Malcolm and his receivers mm -hmm. to come through with those plays. In the line, give them time. It's the whole unit to come through those plays. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, the offensive line has been playing really good our entire season. That's the heart and soul of our offense right now. Like I said, we've been able to stay healthy. And those guys, Coach O has them all on the same page, and we know exactly what to expect. And our receiver play has just been on a whole nother level the last couple of weeks. Uh, those guys go out there, and they all of them try to make plays. I think we threw the ball to about seven, eight different guys and every one of the receivers that we pretty much travel with they all find a way to make plays and not just a play here a play there it's multiple big plays throughout the game you never know which one of those guys is going to have a special day yeah that's all i know well a stat and note you guys have scored every time you get into the red zone either be a field goal or mm -hmm. or a touch you haven't come away empty Talk about how big that is to come out there and be efficient every time you get in the scoring position. Well, we have a different, different motto and a different mindset once we get down there in the red zone. And uh, so far, so good. Knock on wood, we've been 100% this year uh, as far as scoring in the red zone. And I think it's a compliment to, you know, Coach Taylor's doing a great job of calling certain plays. We do a good job as a staff scheming up certain things that, that we see within the defense throughout the course of the week. We spend a lot of time just talking about red zone offense in practice and in, in the film room because we feel like offensively we can do a pretty good job of manipulating balls and, and, and getting runs and things like that from the 20 to the 20. But once you get down in the red zone, defense is starting to tighten up. Those windows start to become smaller. And the biggest thing is Malcolm Bell is executing at a high level, which also helps all of that come, come to fruition. For the first five weeks, you guys have been away from home. What does it mean to you all to be able to come back to O'Kelly Riddick Stadium? Sense of relief. You know, we, we're tired of traveling. Uh, the routine changes a little bit when you're on the road as far as you got to get used and get comfortable to hotels or, or the travel arrangements, whatever they may be. But it, to have a chance to come back home in front of our friends, in front of our family, and, you know, represent the way it's supposed to, especially our first, I think it's our first MEAC, uh, MEAC game at home this year. So we're looking forward to, to our fans, you know, seeing what we can do. What's the key to the, to the balance in your offense? I mean, you got a strong running game, and you can throw the ball as well. What's the key to that to that balance? We try to highlight and emphasize what certain guys can do well. Uh, if we have a great runner that, that can run outside, we're going to emphasize when we get ready to run outside, we put the ball in his hands. And so that's the biggest thing for us offensively. We got some receivers that can stretch the field vertical. We got some that's better at the intermediate passing game. So we want to always try to put the, the ball in those guys' hands to make plays. And the biggest thing is we're not a one-man show either. You know, we, we try to 
to spread the ball around as much as possible. Those guys that deserve it and they continue to make plays, we're going to continue to spread the ball and they're going to continue to get their touches. So I think be, being balanced is a combination of, you know, within our system, we have guys that have a, a multitude of, of skill sets and we try to get the ball in their hands. Do you script them out a certain amount of plays to start the game, or how do you kind of do you do that? Yes, we do. We, we always script about the first 10 to 15 plays of the game. Uh, we spend a lot of time as an office staff talking about what's going to be good, what's going to be bad, what do we need to stay away from. Uh, by, by Wednesday or Thursday, sometimes things get thrown out that we, we thought looked good on paper, but they end up didn't looking as good. What's the percentage run pass you like to, you like to go for it, going to a game? We really don't have one. Uh, we, we do whatever it takes to win the game. If we get in the floor of the game and, and Malcolm is feeling good and our receivers are catching the ball and we're protected, we'll continue to throw the ball with efficiency. Uh, we get into the course of the game and Ramon, Darrell, Torrey end up getting hot running the ball. We'll just we'll make a commitment to running the ball. And I think that's the beauty of where we're at right now. You know, I think true balance is being able to run the ball and pass the ball when you need to. And that's what we've been able to do so far. We have Jalen Wilkes here today. Uh, talk about what he's meant to the receiving core. A big play target. You know, Jalen, I think he's one of the top receivers in the country right now as far as average per catch. Uh, he's doing a great job of extending plays and, and making plays after the catch. A uh, young man that came in last year did some really good things for us. And I think he's one of the receivers that's taking his game to another level. Uh, I think in the St. All game, he had two catches for two touchdowns. Uh, I can't beat those percentages right there. Uh, but he's done an excellent job of just learning our system. He's able to play the slot receiver for us and the outside receiver for us, which is going to help his game tremendously because now he's not limited to just one role. So the better he gets and, and the things that he does for our offense, the better we can be. So after the game, Malcolm said that Bethune went man, man up a lot of the receivers a lot of the time. When you see that as a, as a coordinator or as a coach, you, you got to trust your guys. You, you, you like, hey, I can't believe they're going to keep doing this the whole game. That's definitely playing to your advantage straight with the group you have, I would, I would imagine. Well, all we do is, is call the play. They go out there and make it happen. Uh, we, we did challenge the receivers all week uh, to see that there was going to be a lot of man coverage, and, and we're depending on those guys to attack the ball and make some plays. And fortunately, they, they were able to come through. But not just this game. The whole season, we've been seeing some mismatches and some things, and, and uh, we've been able to exploit some teams as far as pushing the ball down the field. And they've done a great Great job of taking the coaching, and they've done a great job of making plays when their numbers call. Coach, you talk about wanting to improve every single week. Defensive pressure, four sacks at Norfolk State, five at Bethune Cookman. You had Freddie Henry Ajuda come up with three on his own. Talk about the defensive pressure. Uh, defensive line, that, that's the heart and soul of what we do on defense right now. We said it from day one, we felt like that group had a chance to be one of the better groups in the conference, uh, you know, from, from across the board. Freddie, it was just his night. You know, he, he was one of those situations where Freddie did an outstanding job putting pressure on the quarterback, getting his sacks. I think last week we had Antonio Brown do an excellent job. I'm sure it'll be somebody else uh, this week. Uh, we didn't play with Kewan Cox last week. He's back this week. So we're looking forward to the, the amount of pressure and those guys continue to hunt. And I think Coach Bradley is put a certain goal for those guys as far as a sack number he would like to see and they're trying to they're trying to put forward that effort and get that done what's the goal you know what the number is i don't want to say what the number is let's just say it's pretty outstanding <laughs> <laughs> all right we're here with sophomore receiver jalen wilkes uh, jalen first congratulations on the win this past weekend at bethune cookman can you talk about what that meant to this football program uh, you know, man, it's, it was a big win for our team, man. Not only just uh, from an offensive standpoint, but a defensive standpoint as well. Uh, I know it's been over about 20 years since uh, we got a, a win out there in Bethune. You know, I'm a sophomore, so it's my second time going around with them and uh, just uh, be able to come back with a win on the road, man, you know, in that environment. It was a big time for us, man. It really was. What did you do uh, during the break? Uh, Actually, when we first came in there, they said 30-minute break, so it was right after halftime. Our bodies were we started to come down a little bit, so we came in there. We started listening to music, and our spirits started rising. And then uh, our coach came in there. He started to, he said uh, five minutes left, so we all got up. We got ready, started getting loose, and as soon as we got outside, he told us a uh, 30-minute more, 30-minute break again. So we had to go back inside, and uh, so it turned into 30 more minutes. And then so while we went in there, man, we just uh, really just stopped, tried to stay loose. So we was just in there uh, going over the game plan. Uh, listen to music, trying to stay focused, and then uh, when it's finally got back, uh, time to get back out there, Coach Matt really got our, uh, our heads in the game. Was there one particular guy who may have stood up and said something during these breaks, kind of keep you guys uh, locked in? 
I think when we first got, got back in there, uh, it was Malcolm. Malcolm really just stood out and just told us to stay focused because, you know, a lot of us were really excited. We were up on Bethune, you know, on the road, and we just uh, that environment really got to us. So he really just kept us level-headed and just told us to stay uh, con continuous, man. What did you listen to? Tell you guys listen to music. Uh, what were we listening to? Uh, I uh, know it was a lot of rap songs, man. Uh, just a lot of instrumentals. Guys were uh, freestyling in there, man. So uh, it just anything just kind of keep our spirits high, man. We just kind of keep that energy going. Was it difficult? I mean, I imagine it was. You guys were up. You had the momentum. Your juices were flowing. You had to sit for three hours, two hours. How, mm -hmm. how tough was that to bounce back? Um, you know, it was really just kind of just a brand new game. That's what we really wanted to do. Just kind of look at it as a mindset, as if um, you know these guys are in there just like us. So they're at the same disadvantages as us. So we just didn't really want to get uh, too high or just too low, like Coach Max said. Uh, so we really, when we went in there, we just tried to uh, stay positive and just realize when we did to get a chance to go back out there, we just need to make the best, uh, make the best of the, the ability to be out the guard there. And it was easy to say that hey, this is a new game, it's mm -hmm. like a zero zero, but. Did you really have to lock in and take that kind of approach once you guys went back out? Yeah, um, actually, we went back on the field uh, within the first hour, I think. So when we actually started getting warm up and they started getting warmed up, we started uh, the energy start rising, and then they said they seen lightning again, so we had to go back inside, and that kind of just really killed the vibe for us. But then uh, we came back out, and then uh, once we actually started to, to realize that you know the lightning was gone and we had to play football, and it was really that time, so we would just had to uh, stay focused. I know as a receiver, you like to run, you guys run and won't stay loose. Got to stretch your legs out. Did it take you a while to get back going once that break ended? Um, after each uh, individual break, we had uh, individual drills, so we're just running uh, kind of almost full speed, trying to get our legs back re, uh, re loose and just get a, a medium sweat going. Just kind of stay loose and uh, just keep that juice running, you know. Batum Cookman was uh, picked ahead of you guys in the preseason rankings. How good did it feel to get a convincing victory over a team that, you know, the media coaches picked ahead of you knowing that, you know, you guys are the two-time defending co-conference co champs? Yeah, uh, we actually felt a little disrespected, you know. It was just a respect thing going into the season. So when we uh, actually got on the field, everybody was just really hyped up. You know, we were ready to go. So we already knew um, – Coach Mack just told us on the field, you know, this is what we worked for all summer. You know, all summer we've been lifting, we've been running, we've been thinking about Bethune, the, you know, the game last year, how close we were to being outright champs. So when we actually get that opportunity, just be able to go back out there and do it again, man, we really just wanted to make the best of it, you know, which we did. You guys have been showing great consistency within this conference. I believe it's a seven-game winning streak you have within the MEAC. Mm -hmm. Having that, you know, on your back and trying to keep that consistency going, what's the challenge that comes with that? Uh, just day in and day out, just uh, not sleeping on anybody. You know, that's just treating everybody like the same opponent. You know, you want to play everybody just like they're just the number one team on the schedule, just like anybody else. So that's really just the main thing. And just going out there every day, just trying to get better. That's the um, big thing for us receivers, man. We just want to stay positive. Uh, no matter what happens, just play the next play. So that's with that mindset, I feel like we can just keep playing with anybody. And that will definitely be put to the test this week against uh, Florida A&M, mm -hmm. uh, a team that's down right now. But coach says they're pretty talented, you know, on both sides of the ball. Uh, the, the players keeping that mentality that you just spoke of. Uh, speak about how you guys will do that this week for FAMU. Uh, yeah, as we said, man, we just don't want to sleep on anybody. So, uh, you know, FAMU is uh, their record. I don't really know what it is right now. But we want to treat them as the same opponent as, theirs, you know, North Carolina A&T or whatever. So. We really just want to go out here this week and just uh, maintain this kind of focus we got going on, this momentum going, you know, be able to play back in uh, OK the Riddick, man. That's a big that's a big deal for us. So we're just really going to uh, try to ride that out. Just talk about that, um, just uh, playing at home uh, this week after being on the road. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's been a, it's only been two weeks, but it feels like we've been out for almost a month, it feels like, because uh, we've been traveling on the plane, on the bus for a couple of hours. So. Be able to go back home, man, with our fans and this this our home environment with the uh, stands right behind us, man. It's just nothing like it. So we just be able to uh, go out here and execute our plays, and we should be able to come back. With the receiver, did you feel disrespect disrespected when you realized Bethune was going to go man up most of the game? Uh, I wouldn't say disrespected as much as just ready to go. You know, that's just when you see that on film, it's just a sense of pride go over. You know, it's just like this is what what they recruited me for. You know, so just want to go out here and really just show them, you know, what they what they got me for it, you know, so that was my thing. Obviously, with the group you guys have, that plays to your advantage. You guys, you guys can really stretch the field and, and, and get open. Just talk about that unit of the wide receiver group you guys have. Um, the receivers, man, we call ourselves the quick six boys. So uh, we really just – our chemistry together, man, it's like no other. We really feel like uh, – we want to say we're the best receiver core in the MEAC right now. That's, um, we're trying to be undisputed. We want that, want that to be unarguably. So, um, Every day we go out here, man, we just want to um, keep that, that chemistry going because we've really been uh, day in, day out 
my boys really, really been working, man. I'm really proud of everybody that's been coming in. You know, Jason Murphy, he came in. Uh, he made a couple of big plays over this on uh, for third down, so uh, hopefully they start opening them up a little bit more. But uh, as a core man, I really just proud of them. You know, they just really stepped up to the plate and they just kept going, man. So we really just want to keep going. You guys kind of challenge each other during from game to game. Okay, they gonna go man up. Mm -hmm. No, nah, no, nah, man. It's really just in the game plan. You know, you know, every game we go in, day out, and see where the safeties are, trying to see uh, what kind of throws we're gonna have here and there. So uh, if we see that they're just man on, we're just gonna kind of be able to take that ability, trying to keep that chemistry with Malcolm, keep going, and be like, man, you know, you see him one on one, so just you know, just keep it going. I can tell you guys really kind of root for each other. It's my score. You all kind of get together, and mm -hmm. how, how tight is this group? Uh, it's tight like no other, man. I tell you, these boys every day, like last year was nothing like this, you know. So when we came out here this year, and, and you can just kind of feel like when everybody does good, it feels like you're, yourself is doing good. So uh, these boys are really like my blood brothers, you know. I really love these boys to death, and I really just appreciate them. I noticed a lot of y'all got similar hairstyles too. Was that playing? Nah, man. Uh, a lot of. We got a Juco transfer um, in Khalil Stinson. We got a Juco transfer in uh, Murphy. So we were just met up and then we were already developed. So we just, just kind of stick together like that. Oh, you may have heard me ask Coach about the drive. You guys had like a 17 play drive, mm -hmm. a couple third and longs. Just talk about that drive and being able to go out and execute and get that go ahead score to kind of take the momentum out of the film cooking. Uh, you know, that was one of the um, final drives of the game. So we really just wanted to uh, kind of. Uh, I want to say, but when I really went out there on the first play, we really just wanted to keep the uh, a couple screens going, just keep the uh, momentum going. So once we realized that we uh, we could play with these guys, and we really just wanted to keep executing play by play by play. So we just took a couple shots on the one by one, and then uh, we got a couple big first downs, and that led to us winning the game by Ramon Simpson. You know, big plays like you like twenty two yards per catch for you. Yes, sir. Talk about I mean, what is this, what's your secret? Big play guy, you over the top, take take the. Uh, Top about the defense guy, you the deep threat? Uh, you know, I really like losing my, my speed to my advantage. That's, when, that's really my big thing. So uh, anytime I see a corner who's ever be able to uh, run side by side, Malcolm's going to take the chance, you know. So we really just feel like uh, their guy against our guy, that's what we like our guy, you know. So that's really the big thing. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious, who was, who was freestyling in the locker room during the break? Uh, Myself, I had I had a freestyle, um, but the first it was uh, David Miller, another receiver, and then it was uh, Khalil Stinson, another receiver. So you know, it's just that's the kind of chemistry we have over the team. You know, the receivers are just keeping us all high. This has been an exclusive presentation of the NCCU Sports Network.